Hi, everyone. Thank you, Francois. It's always a pleasure to be yeah, engaging with Aspect and with you know, fellow colleagues' work. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of um, dialogues, conversations with, we can have with the other um, two, yeah, the other two books that were presented today. Sorry, I'm just multitasking, trying to make sure I have my screen set up correctly, which is always a challenge. Um, and I hope this is working. I have to go into presenter view. Yeah. Okay. Presenter view. And then there you go. Okay. So um, yeah, this is looking good for everyone. Great. That looks good. <laughs> so yeah, um, I wanted to open with a brief overview of the wider project behind the book, which is the Maya from the Inside exhibit, which many of you have, have met and have seen and have engaged with. So this is not necessarily new for those who, who know the work that we've been doing. Um, but I wanted to lay out some of what we conceive as its methodological, theoretical, and political interventions. So Marea is a complex of 16 contiguous favela communities in the north zone of Rio, which is the industrial area of the city. It has around 140,000 residents living in great demographic density in about, or in less even than two square miles. The project behind Mare from the Inside, which is the book in the exhibit, began in the lead up to the 2014 FIFA World Cup and the 2016 Olympic Games. It began with Enrique Gomes, who is a Mare resident, a community organizer, a musician, and a cultural producer. And his desire, as he's told many of you during the guided tours here at PT, was to challenge the external, often universalizing gaze of Mare specifically and of favelas generally through a more intimate human and pluralistic view of the neighborhood and of its residents. So when he met the Italian photojournalist Antonello Veneri, and he and Antonello decided to collaborate to create more than 50 family portraits that were taken in residents' homes and co-curated with them, developing a methodology in the process that was based on, that expressed, and that strengthened the effective and political bonds in the community. And the exhibit also includes street photographs and videographic elements, documentaries and interviews with the photographed families and has become a traveling exhibit. All of its elements are based on collaborations between US, UK and Brazil based artists, academics, photojournalists and activists that always include Enrique. And Enrique is like the, the connection between all of us in many ways. It's visited Bart College, Brown, um, Grinnell College and Virginia Tech. And next week, we're driving it up to UVA for the next showing. And the collective that emerged in and through the exhibit has been deepening and expanding what has become its pedagogical mission at each location. Um, and here, we always think about the exhibit as a recurring North-South encounter embodied by the students, the co-organizers, and Maria residents when they come together in the exhibit space. And for us who are more kind of in the international relations or politics debates, politically and theoretically, you know, we know that images are political. You know, we know, for example, that we still often consume or learn about issues of world politics through visual artifacts like movies or photographs, and that they produce knowledge about world politics. Roland Bleeker and Sophie Harmon are two people in the subfield of visual politics, so I've been making this point for quite a while now. And we also know that how images are made political, that how, how images are made is political, right? So when images capture a moment, photographs capture also the particular arrangements of those involved, right? In front of the camera, behind the camera, around in the scene and the setting. So all of this articulates subject and object positions that are always embedded in power relations. So in this project as a deeply collaborative labor that's always crossed north-south divides and those between academia, art, and community organizing, the intellectual and create creative labor and the visions of those who are usually the research informants, quote unquote, and the objects of artistic production, such as Mare residents, um, like in Hiki, for example, are always inscribed in the process of the work that we do, including in the book as a product of co-authorship. And as collaborators, 
we linger with the possibilities and the contradictions of disrupting the power relations that mark all the creative and research processes involved in Mare from the inside. And I think all of this really aligns with some of the, the lessons that, that um, Andrea's presentation brought about the contradictions of doing this type of work in universities with which I think all of us would very much align, right? Because ultimately what we're fighting against with many contradictions is an ultimately extractive political economy of academic and often artistic knowledge production. So approaching the exhibit, and this is based much on Sophie Harmon's work on visual politics, as a research method, as an academic output and pedagogical tool, we continue to travel together and expand our work and seeing where it takes us. And now I'm going to hand over to Max, because he's going to tell us more about the book specifically. Thank you, Desiree. Um, I want to, the themes are going to be very um, complementary, I think, to what you're hearing elsewhere in these presentations, but residents of favelas in Rio de Janeiro daily confront systematic misrepresentation of their way of life in, in Brazilian discourse. Their communities are routinely described as sites of perilous and unhealthy conditions. They're depicted often as drug addicts and criminals. But the book and the exhibit that it treats suggests that Mare's residents have insisted instead on broad scale recognition of a non-stereotypic and oppressive picture of the actual varied and vibrant reality of their daily lives. So I think the, the exhibit and the book can best be understood perhaps to build on, and forgive me Desiree, I'll murder this, Licia de Prado Varadere's contention that historical, social, and academic representations of these communities have systematically misled many into considering them as alike in three overarching ways. The first is that of specificity. The favela is a different place from the rest of the city. The second is that the favela is the urban locus of poverty. And the third is that of unity, unity between favelas, unity within the favela, end quote. The book and the exhibit that inspired it show clearly that Mare's residents have refused to concede to the social tyranny implicit in the dominant frame or social imaginary Valadares described. They have challenged those who have othered them as less than and done so in the abstract, for it is always in the abstract that these conceptions gain power. One might say in this regard that the exhibit and book and Mare's residents more generally daily call on Brazil's government and broader population to accept and to act on the moral claim of human dignity. The Polish sociologist Zygmunt Bauman captured this point elegantly, I think. He said, being moral means, in the nutshell, knowing the difference between good and evil and where to draw the line between them, as well as being able to tell one from another when you watch them in action or contemplate enacting them. By extension, it also means recognizing one's own responsibility for promoting good and resisting evil. To put the matter bluntly, what is holy and unconditionally alien to the quality of being moral and what militates against it is the tendency to halt and renounce moral responsibility for others at the border drawn between us and them. The volume and its powerful images press observers to acknowledge the story that too many have imposed on this population and to imagine the dissolution and reconstruction or reordering of that vision. The book is likewise, it seems to me, a potent reminder of the importance of taking the lives of individuals and their shared realities seriously in all efforts to describe communities. The French philosopher Michel de Soto captured the enormous significance of observing what he dubbed the practice of everyday life to glean the daily rhythms and, of communities and to detect the ways in which their residents were addressing injustice and oppression. Andrew Blauvelt has captured the broad import of Certeau's insights. Certeau's investigations into the realm of routine practices or the arts of doing, such as walking, talking, reading, dwelling, and cooking, as you see in these photographs, were guided by his belief that despite respective repressive aspects of modern society, there exists an element of creative resistance to these structures enacted by ordinary people. This Certeau outlined an important critical distinction between strategies and tactics in this battle of repression and expression. 
According to him, strategies are used by those within organizational power structures, whether small or large, such as the state or municipality, the corporation or the proprietor, scientific enterprise or the scientist. Tactics, on the other hand, are employed by those who are subjugated. By their very nature, tactics are defensive and opportunistic, used in more limited ways and seized momentarily within spaces, both physical and psychological, produced and governed by more strategic relations. The photographs and video that this book treats offer a lens into a society whose inherent mosaic-like complexity and whose very lived realities in de Sarto's terms constitute not merely a defensive reaction to the stereotypes pressed upon its population, but a generative evocation of a community of spirit, diversity, vibrance, and resilience. That complexity raises an enduringly important and rich theoretical and conceptual challenge for interested scholars how to represent the individual and collective agency of this population in a non-dualistic way that illumines its vibrancy, shape-shifting character and innate heterogeneity. And with that, I'll turn to Molly. All right, thanks Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Poets. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, great. All right, so hi everyone, I'm Molly Todd and I'm a PhD candidate in Aspect. And I contributed a chapter, which is, is why I'm sharing a few things today. And I'll start by saying that what I'm sharing that I've learned um, has been deeply influenced by the collaborators of this exhibit. And that I'm going to share from the perspective of a US-based audience member who has not been to Murray. And so, the chapter, my chapter developed from a series of conversations with Andresa Georgi and articulates how the exhibit, especially the family portraits, portrays the diversity of family life and effective bonds that weave throughout Marais. So we see examples of intergenerational families, multiple forms of love and relationships, and we also get a sense of the community bonds, especially through the pedagogical tours offered by this collective where audiences hear about the ways that different community relationships across Murray allowed for this exhibit to emerge, um, which Desiree mentioned. And so these diverse relationships allow us or show our differences and our commonalities with Murray residents and challenge constructions of favela communities as radical others to whom US Americans cannot relate. And instead, the exhibit might serve as a mirror for US audiences to reflect on the different forms of love and family that have shaped their lives. But at the same time, it does not collapse difference uncritically. So we're still kept at a distance as viewers and should not assume that we are looking or seeing from the inside. And I think part of that relates to the ways that between the creation and reception of the art, there's always a process of translation. The exterior portraits and accompanying texts provide another opportunity for reflection. So they raise concern around oppressive and neglectful public policies around favelas, like histories of favela removal, neoliberal favela upgrading, and relatedly militarization and violent policing. And so for me as a US citizen, the exhibit thereby asks US audiences to reckon with the global military apparatus of which they, we are a part. And so while the exhibit raises these concerns and um, it simultaneously shares stories of family life, care and love. And I think this is powerful be because it's in this tension that we can really see the favela as a complex solution or negotiation of anti-favela structural forces. So that's one thing especially that I've learned from the collaborators is that the global south is not just a place where our global challenges or problems arise and play out, but instead the political, intellectual, and creative reference points from which these problems are already thought out and addressed every day. And that just brings me to my last point. And again, this was really impressed on me by the collaborators, which is, I think this exhibit presents an opportunity for US-based audiences to listen and to listen to those from Murray. So with that, I will turn it over to Andresa Georgi. Thank you, Molly. Hi, everyone. 
Um, I'm also <laughs> PhD student from Aspect, and I'm Mare resident too. So <laughs> um, when I think about not just this book, but the whole project, uh, the the big issue in my mind is exactly about this kind of collaboration and include the name of the book and the project Mare from Inside. And this make me to think about how much inside or outside of something we can be. And in the in, in this creation of the this book, all the time I'm feel in this uh, act in this role as the outside or inside because when we do some research. We need to think about our positionality all the time. And in, in specific, in this project, I wrote a um, chapter with, doc, with, with Dr. Poet about some pictures and in light of the issues about gender, race, class. And all the time I'm felt as a researcher because I am, but in the on other hand, as a person which lives in Mare and also is part of this exhibition as a, as a photographer, photographer too. So uh, when I think about this book specifically, it's the way when, when it's how we can do research, reflect our positionality and how this change but in the same way, we need to, to add, as Dr. Poet say, we need to talk about um, power relation because even I think the, the, the difference between my positionality as a researcher, as a resident, as a photographer, the, but in the, the same way, I'm st the, the relation, the power relation, there are relation doesn't disappear they still stay in this relation even we have this change of positionality because now i'm here on virginia tech live here in usa but i'm also i'm also is uh, from Mare and he, i'm here try to to understand and struggle with the language and how this uh, imply in my work, in my research too. Um, and all the time we need to think about this structure of the power, how they translate, how the language, how the power ha have influenced directly in our work too. And our way to think, to create our thoughts about um, any topics. And as Molly said, and Max said too, we have um, a, a production of knowledge because we are personal, we are society, we are develop um, issues for our problem, but all the time we need to to think how do this or how we how we can translate this way to produce knowledge to be accepted or understand it for the north north global or the academic space. And this, I think, is the, the big challenge for us. And this book, it's important to say, we have uh, this book in English and Portuguese language. And uh, uh, one of the, 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 the wishes we, we want to give this book for person in Mare, for the, the person which was photographed. And uh, one of the concern we have it's right the way this person can be included in this process too. Uh, not as the as the object of research, but as a subject of this process and knowledge, continuous process to, to build knowledge together as a society. So I, I think it's a good example <laughs> to to do research because um again here with this multiple role inside of this exhibition as a researcher as a, a professor as a, 
um, part of this collective as a Mare resident, I feel the most important is the how we we create respectful relation and how we can think about building uh, the way to produce and knowledge uh, without hierarchies, oppression, and how we can need to still continue to think about that. So I think it's the, the big contribution. Sorry, I tried to, to prove my English in the best and I hope uh, we, I hope you understand me No, Thank you. Great, I think uh, that's